Hello and welcome to Long Beach in with Mo. Yes, it is Long Beach in with Mo. Oh, I'm nearly forgetting what it is. Um, today I have in the studio, we're very lucky to have Terry. Introduce yourself. Terry Harden. Harden. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here Terry and I'm like, oh, Terry, what is your last name? <laughs> <laughs> I've always known you as Terry, Terry, Terry. Um, now we've got a you know, we've got a lot to talk about in this show today, but I really thank you. I know you're a very busy lady, you know, with all the major studios and everything. And oh, I, I'm happy to be here. And I this really thank great. you for coming in today and taking the time out. Yeah, because, this is uh, great. It's been really, you've got a great group here. Oh, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we opened up with a great song um, by <clears throat> World Without Sundays, a, a band I'm going to have on um, next, and it's called Fix It Up. Mm. So, and this is kind of, I thought that was a great opening because it's kind of what you do, right? Yes, yes. What would you say you are? Because I wouldn't call you, a, um, I wouldn't know what to say you are. Well, initially, actually, I'm a, uh, I've uh, been a sculptor for over uh, 20 years, 25 years, and a puppeteer as well. And the idea is I've always wanted to be an actress, but at the time uh, that I decided I wanted to be an actress, Hollywood wasn't ready for me. The look was too odd, if you will. And uh, <laughs> plain and simple, they just... I can't they imagine like, that. No. Mm. Now the look is something that they feel is marketable. So now I am pursuing the acting, standing up instead of with one arm up, as uh, you do with puppets. Right. But puppets for 20 years and continue to be something very special in my life. And the sculpting came from the puppetry because I used to sculpt my characters and then perform my characters. That way I had my whole array of whatever I wanted, however I wanted. So when I started to do puppets, the, the, the designing of the puppets sort of became few and far between because some places want you just to perform and some places want you just to build. So I decided that I would continue the sculpting in the figurative sense, and that's when Disney found me. So that's how that's happened. And when did Disney find you? What Disney first that? found me in 1987. Yes. I had been trying to apply to them for several years but couldn't get through the front door. Okay. For whatever reason, my resume never changed. It's just... Couldn't get arrested. Couldn't, couldn't get arrested. <laughs> and then I met someone who worked for them and they were looking for people. So he brought me in through the service entrance, kind of. Yeah. And they were like, oh my gosh, where have you been? And I said, silly me. Went to the front door. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's out. So that's. I should have went the back door. I should have done know. that. You know. Yeah. yeah where they deliver you, the you, beer or the. So, well, when you know when you went to the front door and it didn't work, out, ah, let's try the back. Exactly. And and it was somebody that just said, I think that they need to see what you do. Right. And they looked at the portfolio and said, Oh my goodness, you know, that you're the, just what we need. Still, it took them a long time to hire me, and, uh, and so finally, when they did. Then I left after designing a few rides and shows for the company. I left and met the vice president of Imagineering, and Imagineering is the place where they design the rides and the shows for Disneyland. Mm -hmm. And I asked if I could come back. I told them I had been working at Mattel doing Disney merchandise design. I had worked at Applause doing Disney merchandise design, and I would like to do Disney merchandise design for Disney, if that was at all possible. <laughs> I just mm -hmm. thought it was a little weird. And he said, uh, there's a new division where we are introducing collectibles to our collectors and we are attaching your name to said collectibles. And that's mm -hmm. when I went and presented some of my art and said, I would like to do this. And they mm -hmm. were really excited and uh, it was a point of weakness, I think, with them because they let me put my name to it. Right. So now for over six years, people have been collecting Terry Harden Disney collectibles. Yes. So anytime I start to float up in the air um, and get my head gets too big, I just call yeah. my mother. You, you can't get through that, that four-foot <laughs> door, you know. You call your mom. <laughs> You're never right. Back. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I remember. <laughs> and and fanta also, we were at this question and answer for the minority report and all the... There was who was there? Tom Cruise and Ca Colin, Colin who Farrell. was amazing. He was amazing. Um, who, who, who was Let's all see, there? Who else there was, was like there? five or six people there, yes. right? Yes. And then you started asking him about a green screen, a blue screen. No, a green screen. Yes, my fiance had a particular question he wanted to ask and couldn't come because he was at his son's premier basketball game. Right. And Tom was really touched by that. 
and uh, said, well, let me answer this question for you. And then afterwards I said, oh, and by he the said, way. He said, well, how do you know about all that? And you said, oh, I'm the foster, I'm a foster farm's, farm's chicken, chicken. Which usually makes people kind of look at you, hmm? But <laughs> in the film industry they go, oh, those chickens, those crazy renegade birds that are trying to be foster farm's chickens in the old car. And, and you thought out the concept? Actually, the concept came from a ad agency in San Francisco, yeah. Good, Goodby, Silverstein and Partners. And what they did is they went down to Southern California and they hired a shop and the shop said, we'll do R&D, we'll bring in a team of artists for each division. And I was one of the artists that was brought in and I came up with the design of the two chickens. The, my, my design was the one that was voted. Now, it, it, it's a bit of an accomplishment, but the thing about the chickens is that if you sculpt something in clay, it sits and it's just like dead. And if you do a mechanic thing, it's ping pong balls and some metal paddles and some whirring gears, and it goes. Gzz, 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 gzz. But I actually did a soft foam sculpted puppet character. Yeah. So when the client came down and looked at all these different things, I had a character, and <laughs> you know, and made fun of their clothes, made fun of. Their, you can't be an executive. Look at that hair, you know. <laughs> and they just went nuts, yeah. and they said, "Those are the ones we want. We want those." And. Uh, and no matter how hard uh, the executive of the company that I was working for tried to dissuade them, they were like, no, 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 those are the, They're the, ones. Those are the ones we want. Yeah. And so then they said, however, we're those sorry. Those were the chickens, right? Those were the chickens, mm -hmm. and I built them. And then they said, but we want to audition you. We think you're very funny, but you're going to have to audition. I was like, no problem. So I landed the passenger. They actually wanted me to play the driver, <laughs> but I didn't want to play the driver. I always play the... I wanted to be... The comedy relief. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, in puppets, I usually play the sweet, sexy, ingenue puppet character. Right. My voice is low, and they like that sultry sound. So here was a chance for me to play the goofy, dopey, stupid character, and I wanted, wanted to, to be do. the stupid character. You know, and so mm -hmm. I fought for that. Also, I didn't think they'd use my voice. They used it for the first year, but after that, they didn't. And so I wanted the person who was the driver to be able to do the voice, and I knew they'd cast a man. Yeah. So I I really pushed to have a man that the driver has the most lines because yeah. the stupid one just wants to eat and sleep and yeah. that's it. Yeah. So uh, so he does do the voice to this yeah. day. He does that. So yeah, because then because uh, then um, everyone was like, well, we should be interviewing you. Forget about this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so funny that everyone. And Tom Cruise is going, yeah, I want to know more about those chickens. You know, <laughs> it's <was> quite funny. <laughs> it was very flattering. Um, very very flattering. But back down to work here is. Um, a, the sculptures that you've worked on. Now, how long does something, say, like this one over this here, one here? Um, take? This one here, which I'm going to remove the lid great, because it just makes it a lot easier to see. This one here is a duplicate of the captain's quarters section of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. There's only 10 in existence of this uh, piece and originally sold for two thousand dollars it is the only mixed media piece i've ever done which means you can see by touching the pillows oh, let's do it on this so side, that they're cushioned yeah. that, and i hire what we had to do with this piece is i go it's a lovely job mm -hmm. because what happens is early in the morning disneyland isn't open i get to walk the ride Oh, which means so I go yucky. in the ride, I walk, I take pictures of it, yeah. and then I take those pictures. And that's my favorite ride character. Oh, it was great. Pirates it was Caribbean. great. You know, you actually walk and oh. look. You're standing, yeah. like here. So it's really, it's really wonderful. And each one of these pieces, except for this one, which is a Disney animated character, yeah. I was actually in the facility, in the ride, shooting what they call turnarounds, which is to take the actual ride that they did and turn it and shoot and turn it and shoot and turn it. So I would climb oh, all around and okay. take pictures without damaging the ride. This one uh, is probably one of the more popular attractions and the most difficult piece. A lot of people will say, what was the hardest part of doing this? And everyone has their guess. But the reality of it is, is this right here, the magnifying glass, because oh, really? I wanted it to magnify. Oh, okay. And so for there's actually 10 pieces available plus the original and every single one is a handmade magnifying glass. I took loops yes. that you look at jewelry, grinded mm -hmm. them down and the gold is a wedding ring size 8. 
Wow, how fantastic is that? <laughs> so, now, if people want to buy these pieces, who, they, can they get you on the website? Or well, these pieces are no pieces? longer for sale, with the exception okay. of Tinkerbell, who you see over in front of Chernabog. Mm -hmm. She's available. Yes. And um, what happens is Disney will call me and they'll say, we're going to have an event. Yes. This was for the Haunted Mansion 35-year anniversary event. Oh. And this one is actually not the way the piece turned out. I do art proofs, and the painter had to, we had to kind of figure out how we were going to paint it, and this was a rejection. Oh, it was? So yeah, why was that the rejection? The thing that's great about it being rejected in the collector's world is now every collector, when they see that it's available, they say, they want I want to buy it. Yeah. Because it's the only one in existence. It is the painted one that they said no to. Yes. And uh, originally they decided to have it go more along these lines where there's colors and stuff right. instead of the bronze look. Now, do you but think they did that because of it's, it's more appealing to the eye? They or? thought it was more appealing. What we did in the original piece, and I don't have the original art piece because this ended up being mine. My fiancé fell in love with the bronze look. Yes. So this is the one I kept. It's beautiful. But originally they, we, we made the lantern like, say, a yellow, and the yellow then was reflected in his face, his oh, clothes, okay. his outfit, and also on the dog's back. And so Disney just felt that felt more like the ride instead of okay. making it like a, a generic bronze hmm. thing. I like but the collectors, Disney. collectors really wanted it. Yeah. But there was only ten, and then they sell for a couple thousand each. Yeah. And it's kind of a first cur come first serve first basis, serve. Yeah. you know. With the exception of this guy, there was only five. Yeah. Done, and you had to be, you had to be a part of a lottery. Oh. in order to do it. So you had to uh, come to the event, mm -hmm. which was held on Halloween, and then if you liked it, you put your name in a drawing, and they drew five names, and then you were the, you, if you were the lucky person, you got to pay $1,500. Goody. <laughs> Then, you know, I don't know if that's such a good idea or not, but <laughs> yeah, of course it is. But a lot of people fought over them, and then the originals are also for sale. And what event but, uh, was that? What event did they? Go this to was called to? the Villains Event. Okay. Now Disneyland has an event that's called uh, the Halloween Event, Haunted Mansion Event, with a with um, a Haunted Mansion um, Nightmare Before Christmas Event. Okay. So they've changed it because now they redecorate the Haunted Mansion to look like Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, and they always kick it off with a pass holder event. Yeah. A pass holder being someone who buys a year pass to the park. Yeah. And for them, they offer these special engagements where you can buy special collectible pieces that artists do, see special shows, talk to special people yeah. on Nightmare Before Christmas or... Um, Haunted Mansion, depending on what it was. This year, the year that I did it, it was, you were able, it was all villains because people love the Disney villains. Mm -hmm. And this Chernabog is probably one of the more popular of the Disney villains. Right. And I wanted to make sure that I did something that a collector, if he was a Chernabog collector, could have in his collection without it duplicating the same pose. Now, when you say that, you, what is your thought process on, on doing the, because I notice each one has a fantastic base. Yes. As, you know, you you work it from the base to the, t it seems like you think of every single detail. Like I you say, for instance. I start with a drawing. Yes. I didn't bring drawings today, but I start with a drawing, and my drawing is awful. But they insist on drawing. <laughs> so are they little stick men or sculptor? <laughs> <laughs> Drawer. <Don't> draw. <laughs> okay, well, it's not stick figures, and I can make it work. Right. But it takes a lot of concentration. Yeah. So I say this is not what it's going to look like, but this is an idea of where I'm going. Right. They approve those, mm -hmm. and they say, okay, what would it cost to do caretaker and his dog? What would it cost to do captain's quarters, mm -hmm. what would it cost to do Chernabog, and I give them a price. Then they say, okay, we want to make 10 mm -hmm. in the edition, how much for each piece, and then I have a team of people that does every phase. So I do the sculpting, right. then they're molded, I have someone who does the molds. Mm -hmm. Then they're painted, I have someone, I have actually three different painters, because a person who can paint this may not be able to paint this one. Right. This one I actually had a guy do. Mm -hmm. This one a young lady did. Mm -hmm. And you may say there's nothing different with the genders, but men just really love this character. Mm -hmm. And so a man is going to give it 
what he feels it needs to have, and most of the collectors who collect this character are men. Yeah. So I just, I, I actually had two art proofs, gave one to the young lady and one to the young man, and just picked my favorite paint job, and mm-hmm. he won out. And sometimes that'll happen the other way, and then she'll, she'll win out. So yeah. it just kind of depends on what it is and how it's done as to whether or not who gets to paint it. Right. I just don't want to paint it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not what I do. <laughs> so then once it's painted, Disney looks at it and says, okay, we love it. Um, then I take it with someone and I say, okay, here's what it looks like. Right. Now help me design a base. And there's a person who actually just comes up with the concept of the bases. Right. And then she does that and she's very, she's very excellent. This is one of my like favorite bases, bases. I have to say. I mean, each one is so different. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And you, and and what are these little clay? Or, or the, these are kind of the examples of how it starts. <clears throat> I uh-huh. start with a clay. Yeah. This is the clay, and this is clay is called Chavant. There's all kinds of clays out there. Chavant means automotive. Oil-based clay is used in mostly making the designing of automobiles. One of the reasons is it's hard. You can touch it. Mm-hmm. You heat it up with a. a uh, incandescent light, mm-hmm. it becomes soft and mushy, and then it's hard, so you can actually touch it and hold it, and it won't get mushed up. Now, when when it's hardened again, and do you, you put it in the oven, so it, it no, we don't cook this. Again. We don't cook this at all. This oh, is just don't. an oil base. There mm-hmm. is a clay called Sculpey, mm-hmm. Super Sculpey, which you can bake. But my problem is, is the smaller you get, it loses its, it breaks down back to its properties, okay. which means it comes, back, it goes back to its elements, and so you can't get the detail. <laughs> Okay. So I found with these, these are waxes. This is the material that I use. This is oh, called a toy wax. You toy can see prototype every little wax. detail. Yes, and, and you can see that, like in the, the face, the... that you can get that there's like really super. Even in the profile, you can see there's really super detail there. Yeah. And there's even like in here, I can do the rivets in here. Wow. I mean, the detail is amazing. Not even in the, the fingers wax. and the hands and the. But the. But the uh, trick to this, yes. this piece, the wax, is that you start in the clay and you do a really fast rough. So okay. in this case, I whip this out in like half hour. Okay. The idea is to get the masses. Don't worry about, you know, get the basic shape of it. Don't worry if it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. The idea is to keep all the rough tool work. Then I send it to my mold maker. Yeah. He takes a mold of it and pours a wax. Yeah. The wax doesn't look like this. It's rougher. Okay. It looks like this in wax. Oh, okay. In the wax, wax shows seems to show all of your sins. So you'll say, oh, gosh, it looks a little warped or whatever. Right. So then you just take the wax, break it apart, re adhe- the adhesion and breakage is so undetectable yeah. that you can break it a million times. And as long as you have all the pieces, you can put it back together and it'll wow. look like it was never broken. And it's the reason I, the reason I do it is for the detail. Once yeah. it gets to this stage, mm-hmm. it then a resin is poured, and that's what this is. This oh. is the primed resin, and this is actually an audition piece I did for for Mattel. Oops, oops, there she is. For Mattel. For Mattel. When I went to Mattel to do work for them, they have the sculptor's audition for them. Yeah. And the audition is basically. Uh, we're going to watch you while you sculpt something. <laughs> Come up with something. She was originally done in Sculpey, and then as a kindness to me, they, they took a mold of her, and we poured a resin, which was really nice. And how long did that sculpture of her take? About eight hours. Yeah. And I had an eight-hour day to, to complete her. And then they said, okay, that's cool. You know, yeah. you kind of expect them to maybe go, then, but they didn't do that. <laughs> Once it's primed, it goes to the painter. Okay. And the painter then chooses colors based on what they've seen yes. at the actual attraction itself. Okay. With this, you'll notice in Chernabog that uh, it may not be the actual animation colors. Right. Because once it goes three-dimensional, mm-hmm. you want to get the feel of the piece. You don't want to get oh, it exactly sweet. like it. You just want the people to look at it right. and say, that feels like my... That's that's my man. That's my that's my gargoyle. That's my devil. Whatever they think he is, that's my villain. Okay. You know? <laughs> so fantastic. So none of these, I'm sorry to say, are for sale except for this young lady. So let's let's feature her just a little bit, really yeah. quick. Yeah. This is Tinker Bell, mm-hmm. and Tinker Bell uh, is available only two places on the planet: uh, Disneyland at the Disney Anna store, and Downtown Disney at the Downtown Disney store. She's $75, so she's extremely reasonable. Yeah. And uh, 
my email is here. If you email me, you buy her and you want it signed, just email me and say, I'll meet you at Downtown Disney on said date. Can you come? I'll email you back and say yes. I'll be more than happy to sign it. I sign. Right. I'm more than happy Actually, to sign all Actually, I think I might pieces. buy that particular one for my one of my in-laws. <laughs> yeah, they're they're so lovely, and there's yeah. a lot of them. It's nice to know yeah. most of my stuff. I you can be happy to say sells out in an hour. Yeah. But luckily, because Tinkerbell is a limited edition of 2,500, she's actually been available for the last year. Right. So it's been really nice to be able to tell people, yes, you can get something, you can get and you something. can get her. Yeah. And you she's know. standing on top of Disneyland, She's standing right? on top of a little, actually, it's Peter Pan's map. Uh-huh. This is actually the recreation of her tiptoeing across the map, showing where Pan is located for Captain Hook. Oh, okay. But this is called Tinkerbell's map, and you'll see that it has a two cent. It's actually a postage stamp yeah. rendition of the map so that uh-huh. she could be big, because in the original, see, there's the two cents. The original of uh, this would have made Tinkerbell about that big, oh, and the map, I you know. See. So you have to have a justification for collectors as to why she's this big, other than you really would like to see her. Yeah. And the lovely thing about her is she's caught, she's on model, which means that she looks just like the one from the film. Yeah. And the reason she does is because the wife of the artist who created her sent me pictures of her face so that I could duplicate it to his specifications and that's what's great if you yeah. ask a collector you know there's really rabid uh tinkerbell collectors out there yeah. who will just kill for her and yeah. i wanted to make sure that if they had collected every single tinkerbell in their collection mm-hmm. there was something else they could add without going oh i have that pose well, i think my husband's you know? uh, brother and, and sister-in-law would like her <laughs> oh yeah and Definitely. it's nice because they're 75 dollars you, you know Lisa, it's, not it, it's, yeah. not yeah, it's not 2000 it's not 2500 it's not yeah, you know, but, but with all the work that's actually gone into them, I mean, this piece right mm-hmm. here, how did how long did this take? You? Well, this one was the same. These two were actually offered at the same time. Should I take this You off? can take that off if you want. Just lift straight up. So you, and this was interesting because now on the ride, the, you, you now are taking it out of the ride. So you have to yeah. figure out how it's going to work how as a sculpture presentation. Because yeah. if you just took it straight out of the ride, it doesn't work. It's yeah. a, wall, a flat wall. You'd have figures on this side, you'd have yeah. dog on the other. So I had to come up with some ways to give you the same feeling right. because it's really about when you look at it, do you feel it? Not if you just use your eyes with art, then you can really miss the mark right. because you want your collector to go, oh, I got to have that, and right. then say, how much? That's <laughs> right. That's right. We've only got five minutes left, Tori. Oh. Can you believe what do you want to talk that? About? Um, <laughs> I haven't even got to the, to the posters boards. yet. Well, run to the um, boards. Let me. Let me <laughs> we'll do the, the what is it, here. art history lesson in three minutes. Yeah, I, I have to hold this up like this so it doesn't get too, too um, yeah, shiny we'll here. We if you want to point uh, at something, uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll home okay. in on it. And um, All right. Uh, well, there's a chicken. Oh, there's a foster there's farm chicken. There's a chicken, chicken if you want to know what that. For those of you who didn't know what the foster farm chicken is, there's a chicken. And then um, what else can I show you? Let's go down here. And you can see, um, well, you can do what you can. A, this is the Flintstones. What you're looking at now is the Flintstones. I did the Flintstones, and these, here I am, that's my rump. And then <laughs> here I am over here programming the uh, time clock. And then below, right here, is Elizabeth Taylor about to climb into the dinosaur's mouth. And I'm operating the dinosaur's mouth. And then below that, I'm on the set with Whoopi Goldberg on another film that we did together. So I've done a lot of films. Over here, for those of you who watched Disney's Dinosaurs, I didn't play Baby, but I was Baby's arms. So the wave is, these are my arms in here. So you like put that. your arms into the into the. Yes, character. I did that for five years. Okay. So uh, that's the puppetry end of it. Done a lot of films like Ghostbusters. And then Ghost you got Busters. Halle Berry right Halle here. Halle Berry over here doing the, doing the little Dicta Bird and... Uh, and stuff like that. So I've done both Flintstones films, and I've done uh, some television shows like Storytime and Puzzle Place. Fantastic. Let's so. get this other board real okay. quick, because I'm being told, three minutes! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you're going to have to come back, Terry. I'm I'll sorry, but come we're going to have to drag you back be here, because uh, it hasn't been long enough. Yeah, right in, and if you haven't been bored to tears, then, then we'll come all. back. Now, is this from the Ghost? Um, yes, this is from the original um, Ghostbusters. All right. So I helped build it, and then I also puppeteered a lot of the characters from that film. Yeah. So, um, and this is like a lot of that stuff. This is from uh, the film Relic, and then uh, Dunes over here. Okay. 
though. You got so, do it. Well, there's go. There's there's the marshmallow yeah, man. Carry that's on the, panning and Terry That's the first you. prototype, and then down here is the actual suit. We did 18 of these suits. Wow. Three burners and some non-burners. Yeah. And then over here, what do we got? Well, okay, over here we've got the frame for what's just above it. In Relic, they had these skeletons in the film Relic. Right. Uh, and then over here is a parade I did where I did this character for Disney's uh, Hollywood on Parade or some kind of parade that I did where I used a chainsaw and a machete. You can kind of see that this is me here so you can see how big that is. Look at you. So, uh, yeah. So over, let's see, over... So you don't go into work in like a suit or anything? No, 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 no. no. It's, it's no, like, no. hey, I'm sculpting these. And now you wear pants and you wear something that you can get junk on because you're going to usually, me especially, I'm going to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to name a few, what, what movies have you worked on? Ghostbusters and Dune were my first two. Yeah. I stunt doubled for Sean Young and Dune for yeah. two weeks in Mexico. And then in Ghostbusters, I was the puppeteer, create, helped create the Marshmallow Man, and there was a puppeteer on uh, Librarian, the Marshmallow Man, and the Terror Dogs. Yeah. And then did both Men in Black films, yeah. Country Bears. Country Bears was my favorite, if you haven't seen it. And somebody told you it was awful. They're lying. <laughs> uh, it's a really sweet movie, and if you want something wholesome for kids, it's awesome. It's, it's a great good. movie. I play Trixie and Big Al in that film, right. and uh, there's just um, you know IMDb has a few of them on there. But well, uh, I'm being told we got to wrap it up. And okay. I really want to thank you for coming in. Oh and yeah. Please come in again. Anytime. All right. Anytime. It and was thank great you, fun. Terry, so much. Yeah. And if people want to get in contact with you really quick, your email address or website address is, is uh, Tigger. Like the bouncy cat from Pooh, Tigger Terry, T E R R I, at earthlink.net. Thank you very much, Terry. So, yeah, feel free to, you write, yeah, do write. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was good stuff. Thank you. I thought we were both involved. I thought we were two rights doing wrong. Sure, I fired this smoking gun.